Hi YouTube, Tom Matthews uh, from Matthews Engineering again. Um, I showed some earlier videos where I was tinkering with Arduino and I wanted to show something new that I found that's uh, pretty interesting. It's been out for a couple years, but um, if you guys haven't seen this, uh, you'll be amazed. Uh, these things are uh, three or four dollars. And uh, what I'm talking about is the Node MCU and uh, it's also called ESP8266. It's by a Chinese uh, semiconductor company, uh, Expressive Systems. And um, this is what it looks like. Um, so here's a Node MCU board. The ESP8266 is this smaller module there. And this has got an 80 megahertz RISC CPU on it. Uh, and it's got four megabytes of flash memory. I've got it partitioned right now, one megabyte for program and three megabytes for, uh, it'll do a SPIFS uh, file system. I think that stands for a SPY um, FAT32 file system. And so um, I basically have a web page on here. And it also has a, a Wi-Fi radio that can be either a client or a station. I've got it set up as a client here today. Um, and just to prove that this is really wireless, I've got it running, this whole thing running on a 9 volt battery. And I'll show you a little demo here. The other thing that's on here um, is this, uh, this is by ST uh, Electronics. This is a uh, ST Semiconductor. This is a VL53LOX uh, uh, time of flight distance uh, sensor and this thing is really cool it measures um, distance to an object not by ultrasound but um, by putting a pulse of infrared light out and it actually measures the transit time for the round trip so it's it's resolving the transit time down to picosecond resolution uh, and a really amazing part um, this part is more expensive than the whole uh, node mcu board although these aren't too bad this eval board here is about six dollars on ebay uh, the node mcu um, those you can get for three to four dollars for that whole thing with four megabytes flash, 80 megahertz, um, RISC 32 bit CPU, and Wi Fi radio. There, um, I'm using the Arduino uh, development environment to program this. Um, I have done some programming here, but there's a lot of good libraries out there. And friends of mine were saying, You know, did you do all that programming? I'm like, Well, yes, but. Uh, but you know, modern programming, um, there's so many libraries on GitHub, uh, and you can you you know basically get the pieces and put them together, and then the, the programming that you have to do is uh, you know basically gluing them together. So what have I got this doing for a demo? Um, so first of all, I programmed a web page in there. It's uh, you put the HTML and you put a uh, content style sheet in, and there's also some JavaScript in here. That's all sitting in the SPIFS memory. So it looks like it's sitting on a disk drive um, the way you would normally be sitting on a web page server. And, um, and then the Node MCU, they expose the processor so you can write your own code. And I have it doing a loop where it's pulling this um, time of flight sensor. And then uh, through WebSockets, it's going to serve up a web page here. I'll show you a demo of it in a second. Maybe I'll just start it right now and then we can talk about it. Um, so uh, here's the web page. Um, it will show when it loads over here. That should turn green. Um, and then these are the time of flight measurements. Um, here's the text window showing the, in millimeters how far it is from here to this little note cube. This is a Google Charts object. So um, I didn't have to do much to get that to work. You Google Charts website, uh, you tell it what kind of chart object you want, and they give you uh, the JavaScript code for that. You copy the code into your system, and um, you have to make a few adjustments you know, to get it to work. Uh, but then I'm pumping WebSockets data over to there. And same thing with this is a C3D3 chart, and it's plotting versus time, uh, the measurements. I'm pumping out a measurement every 50 milliseconds. Uh, this could go even faster on WebSockets. It's amazingly fast when you get it working right. Um, and I could probably get it working at about 200 hertz. So at 50 milliseconds here, it's working at 20 hertz. But that's as fast as the VL53LOX can go. 40 milliseconds is about the fastest you can get a measurement out of it. So I've got it running at 50. Um, and let's see what happens here. So when I move this cube out, 
that time of flight sensor is measuring the distance to the cube. Um, it's displaying it over Wi-Fi. It's publishing a web page, a live web page with that time of flight data. And then over here, uh, I'm just using a local LAN address, but um, but you can also publish these to the, cl the cloud. I er had this uh, earlier hooked up to a service called PubNub, um, where you can put your data to the cloud, and then you know any anybody anywhere can can grab that data. Or you can have if you have a server in the cloud, you could do the same thing. Um, this is on the LAN here, but you can also open a port on your LAN, and then from anywhere in the world. Uh, you could see this this uh, data stream, and you can see it's quite fast. That's at 50 milliseconds per sample. Uh, Web sockets is amazing. Um, a lot of people don't know. You know, in the old days, you used to only be able to serve a web static web page, uh, but for about 10 years now, Web sockets has allowed uh, once the web page is connected to establish a, a high-speed uh, data path between the server and the client, and that's what's going on here. Um, so pretty neat stuff. Um, the Google chart object is just a you know speedometer showing the distance to the sensor, and then the graph is quite responsive. Um, those are 50 millisecond samples. Um, very fun project. Um, I hope all your projects are going well. Uh, and uh, thanks again for watching videos from Matthews Engineering.